So I've had the opportunity to watch this summit for the past couple of years from afar. And uh, today is my first opportunity to actually be here and see all the great work going on. It's really fantastic. I'm thrilled. So my name is Eric, and I want to tell you a little bit about ATG, which is where Uber builds its self-driving vehicles. Now, we have this vision of how we connect people like yourselves with the safest, most reliable, and most efficient transportation options available to you. And our self-driving technology is an important part of that mission. At ATG, we're building a better, safer, and cheaper way for you to go from A to B within the Uber ecosystem. Remember, better, safer, and cheaper within the Uber ecosystem. Our journey at ATG began four years ago. I, I don't know how that happened. It feels like yesterday. And building this technology is a very wide span of domains. It's not just software engineering, not just hardware engineering. It's all of those things. It's quality control. It's V&V. It's rapid prototyping. It's building partnerships with OEMs and tier ones to make this thing happen at scale. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about that how we do this so that we can build this at scale, as this is Uber and everything on Uber is Uber scale. So first, four years ago, we did our, our, our very beginning vehicle. It was a big Chevy Suburban, and it had a lot of room and a lot of power available in it, so we could put things like rack mount servers and any sensors we wanted, and it had a, had a big rack on the roof, and we could bolt things and try things. But the entire time, it was with an eye on getting further to the right in this photo, where you see each version getting better, getting more manufacturable, getting more reliable, all the way over to where we are today with the Volvo XC90s that you've seen in the past. In order for us to build the self-driving ride-sharing product, it needs to be, again, it's got to be better, safer, and cheaper. And how do we do that? So. It takes three main things. First of all, it's got to have the tech. And we've all talked about the tech, and everybody's hearing about the autonomy tech. And that's an absolute critical ingredient. But if all you have is the tech, you have a demo. Uber is what actually allows you to commercialize this technology. It's how you go to market. And so that's what we have as best of breed here at Uber. It's the heart of what we do. You combine that with the tech. And then, of course, you have to have a path to scale. And this path to scale is what we want to show you outside in the, in the main hall today, which is our latest generation of the Volvo platform. We call it the body. There's the brain in the body. And that is what we refer to as the body outside. Now, in the beginning, in the early on, the way it went was our vehicles went from Sweden, where we purchased them as, as you would buy a Volvo as just a normal vehicle, and then they were sent over to one of our partners in Michigan, where they were disassembled. And I mean invaded. These things, the interiors were moved, and down to the metal, what's called the body in white, because the first thing we added was our wiring harness. And, and when you do this, a few things happen. You have a lengthy process. You have a process that doesn't lend itself to scale. It introduces opportunities for mistakes or for errors and the overall reliability and the quality isn't where we want it to be. But it's what we needed to do in the beginning so that we could, in, paral in parallel, develop what, we've, what we're debuting here today. And the way that looks is the 519G is what we call it, which is our body that has these things already built into it from the factory. They have the latest generation of um, infrastructure so that we can actually control this vehicle with our computers. From, re from redundant braking, redundant uh, pa power, redundant steering, everything is ready to receive our, our full autonomy kit. Now, what it looks like from the outside isn't much different, but what's going on inside is what enables us to run our full autonomy system the things like 360 degrees of camera coverage, 360 degrees of LiDAR, radar, and ultrasonics. 
all of these sense modalities are very complementary and give this vehicle the ability to see all that it needs to see to operate autonomously. It has redundant steering because there, at some point, won't be someone behind the steering wheel, and if there's a failure, it has to have a second system. It's got redundant power, as you see here, and then it also has a redundant braking system because these are all electronically controlled now, and there won't be a person's foot pressure to actuate the pedal if there's a if there's if one of the systems goes down. So it's got two, and then we've also considered how your user experience will work, and so we'll keep that um, amazing experience that's part of the better into this vehicle. And then cybersecurity was considered from the very beginning, and all of this is what allows us to have the body that allows us to put this in the Uber network at scale. Now, one thing that's really important is the value of our partnerships. It's impossible to do this without a fantastic partnership like Volvo. They bring over 100 years of expertise, and without their expertise, something like this would be nearly impossible to do. We've been working with them for over four years to get to this point. This vehicle outside, four years, is actually a really quick timeline in the OEM world. We're very, very proud of how quickly we work together as partners on this. We see this platform, this body, as a critical ingredient to our product, and it's also just an ingredient. Another thing that we should uh, hear a little bit more about, which we'll hear from Raquel, our chief scientist, are some of the things she and her team and the software teams are working on in the brain of the vehicle. So over to Raquel. Thank you. Hi, I'm super excited today to be showing for the first time some of the industry-leading technology that Uber ATG has been building in the field of AI. One of the canonical, th um, uh, one of the important technologies that needs to be uh, developed uh, for self-driving vehicles is the maps that allow the vehicle for, to go from point A to point B. The simplest uh, canonical example of maps is basically a map that contains the topology of the road as well as the intersections. This is the type of map that every one of you humans use every day in your navigation app in order to go to your destination. Machines, self-driving cars, use these maps in a very similar way in order to plan a high-level route. However, to go from a high-level route to drive safely in the environment, there is a long way to go. In addition to these maps, self-driving vehicles utilize uh, more sophisticated maps called high-definition maps. These maps um, basically contain very precise 3D information of the wall around us that the vehicles use in order to localize with precision of a few centimeters. Here in the screens, you can see for the first time, some of this AI technology that ATG has developed that is able to utilize both cameras as well as LADAR in order to build these, these maps at the scale. But these maps, maps are more sophisticated than just geometry. They contain all sorts of information uh, about the semantics of the scene. Uh, these are things such as um, sorry that. these are things such as the um, can you guys go one back? OK, anyways. So these are things such as the, um, the roads, the lanes, uh, the intersections, the traffic rules, et cetera. And it allows the vehicle to see uh, farther than the sensors allows you to do. And this is important in order to plan a, a safe maneuver. Now, build this, building these maps at a scale is a problem. Um, in particular, typically what the industry does is that you send a fleet of self-driving vehicles around the world to basically capture multiple times uh, the same environment. And then you have hundreds of annotators, humans, that basically label the semantic elements by hand. As you can imagine, this is actually a very expensive process. It was estimated by a third party that in order to build a map of the US once, it will take $1 billion. Now, if you want to operate like Uber all over the world, right, this is going to be extremely costly and not affordable. Furthermore, building the map of the environment once is not sufficient because the world is changing all the time. Now, to mitigate this problem, Uber ATG has developed pioneer AI technology that allows us to build this uh, much, much cheaper. 
In particular, we build technology that allows machines to collaborate with humans in order to minimize the number of clicks necessary to do these tasks. So here I'm showing examples from crosswalks, road boundaries, as well as complex lane topologies, for example, in highways, as you see over here. With this technology, we are able to basically require only less than 2% of the human clicks that otherwise will be required, saving millions of dollars when building these maps at scale. What is important about this technology is not just about sending self-driving vehicles around to capture the environment. Uh, this technology can actually work with other modes of transportation. And you have seen in this summit some amazing vehicles, right? Uh, drones, as well as flying vehicles, other types of flying vehicles that we can utilize in order to build this, uh, these maps once these, vehicle popula these vehicles populate our skies. But the world is constantly changing. Right. What if our map is not up to date? What if the self-driving vehicle localization system fails and the vehicle doesn't know exactly where it is precisely in the world? What can we do? It is important that in order to build technology that is safe, that we are able to online estimate the map as we drive in the environment. What I'm showing you here for the first time is the AI technology that we have developed in order to be able to drive autonomously, safely, for hundreds of kilometers without interventions in highways, without requiring to even have a map a priori. Instead, we can use the sensors on board, um, the cameras, the lidar, etc., in order to, on the fly, estimate where are the lanes and drive safely on them. But the world is even more complicated than that, right? In places like Toronto, where I live, or Pittsburgh, uh, where we operate, um, it says that there is two different seasons. There is winter season as well as construction season. These are examples of my daily commute. I walk 20 minutes to work, okay? And it's, you know, every single day I see at least a new construction site. You can call me that I'm obsessed with it, but actually, you know, this is happening, you know, all the time. And construction elements are, are actually uh, depict very complicated semantics. The element on the top right that I'm showing on the screen uh, is an element, a construction element in Toronto that basically says where there is a new tram stop. It turns out that in the city, the rules uh, change if actually it is the case that there is a stop from one of our trams. Right? So probably none of you actually, uh, when you saw this image, you realize that you now, you now need to change the way that you drive in this area. However, our self-driving cars have to actually be uh, aware of this and respect the rules of traffic. So it's actually really, really difficult to do so. So for the first time here, I'm also showing you um, uh, examples of how the uh, AI, the new AI system that we have built, can actually estimate construction at it, as it drives. Importantly, very small construction elements like small cones we can detect them for the first time at least 150 meters from the vehicle, which allow us to change lanes or prepare what is a safe maneuver in reaction to the fact that it's a construction site. I want you to focus on the video that is on the right, where different colors depict different semantic elements, where you have constructions, uh, construction elements as well as signs, which are also necessary as you know, they change uh, uh, all the time. Now, what is important about this technology is that it's not just about seeing what you see in this particular point in time. It requires to have memory of what you have seen you know, many, many meters ago. Because in order to understand which lane is blocked or which direction of traffic is allowing a particular lane, new lane, you need to actually understand how you enter that construction site in the first place. And that might be even kilometers away from where you are now. Now, one of the great benefits of having in-house AI is that we can actually develop technology that is scales from day one, instead of you know, having this as an afterthought. Um, what is uh, important to understand also is that the way that we plan to operate is to start in a small geofence areas where the capabilities of the brain of the car you know, are safe, and then continue expanding and expanding these areas until potentially we cover the whole world. Today, I show you some of the challenges uh, that are part of developing this technology uh, at scale, not just in small GFNs areas. And I'll show you a very small glimpse of some of the industry-leading AI technology that Uber ETG has developed in the last few years in order to be able to tackle some of these challenges. 
And our goal is to get you, each one of you, to where you want to go much better, much safer, much cheaper than you have ever been before. Thank you.